Welcome to the Abundant Syndrome demonstration site. If you've been following Abundance Syndrome for any amount of time, you know that I have a lot of ideas, a lot of theories, about what we can do with agriculture. But those aren't just theories. We're actually demonstrating it, we're actually doing it, and we're bringing you along to show you how we're doing it. This is a lease property. It's about three and three quarter acres that we have under management. The first section didn't always look like the lush field behind me. It was a crop field like this crop field next door. It's not bad as a row crop field goes, but it does have the typical problems with erosion and it's losing massive amounts of carbon to the atmosphere via oxidation. In fall of 23, we planted this field in a pasture mix, and in fall of 24, we moved sheep on and started rotationally grazing them. The sheep moved across the grass and trampled it down and pooped and peed on it, and the trampled grass attracted earthworms. Earthworms came up beneath the grass and started eating the grass and the root dieback on the plants is also feeding the earthworms. There's worm castings in the root ball when you dig it up from a clump of grass. It's rapidly changing the soil here. We also planted trees as you can see behind me. We are going to manage those trees in a centropic system to provide shade for the sheep but also to provide fodder for them and food for human consumption. Syntropic agroforestry is the process of growing a lot of trees together, some of which are grown purely as chop and drop. So there'll be plants in here that will be chop and dropping back onto the surface and feeding the ground, and it follows the same principles as the rotational grazing where we're growing biomass and then cycling it back into the ground. Here we have a catalpa tree. The tree is going to put on a lot of biomass. We can chop and drop this back into the ground. It also has a worm that forms a symbiotic relationship with it, and those worms can be used to feed chickens, or you could also use them to feed turkeys or some other poultry. Here's an example of a poplar that is being grown from cuttings. It's really, really fast growing, probably one of the fastest growing trees we have here. Its primary purpose is going to be to improve the soil and provide biomass, but it also can be used to grow, if we grow it large enough, to inoculate with oyster mushrooms and grow mushrooms for human consumption while we're in that decomposition process. Here we have an example of fast growing willow. The primary use of the willow is going to be to produce biomass. It also has a massive root system that when we chop it back will die back and help to drain the soil here which is kind of wet. As that root system dies back it's going to change the soil and make it more porous. It also could be used for basket making or making wattle panels. We also have lots of other plants we'll be planting in this system and we'll show those to you in the future. But let's go look at the other area on this property. This area behind me, about an acre and three quarter, didn't always look like this. It looked like this, a mass of blackberry brambles, bush honeysuckle, and Bradford pear. About a year ago we came in here with a bush hog and a skid steer and smashed the briars and brambles down onto the ground. This past winter we came in here with a bunch of hay and piled on top of those smashed brambles and fed the sheep on top of that.
and they peed and pooped on it and now it's decomposing down into beautiful topsoil and it's growing back in a lush forage and over time this will turn into very very good forage for our sheep. So we'll bring you along through this process and show you how the grazing works, how it rotates nutrients back into the soil and how the tree systems work on the same principles of chopping and dropping back into the system and actually give an example of how applied secession works. In previous videos we've gone over the theory about how applied secession, ecological secession, works in relation to regenerative farming but we're actually going to show you how those things work here on our demonstration site. So please subscribe and follow along. We've got a lot more coming.